Our next presentation is from Dato Light, California, Sean Baravan and his lovely model, Marianne, who's also the president of Dato Light, California, I believe, uh, are going to uh, uh, demo some of their lights. So show Thank us you, what Jim. you got. Thank you for having us. Thank you for always being so inviting and welcoming to us. We really appreciate it. So yeah, my name is Sean Boyervin, and I'm with Data Light California. Um, we sell data lights and import them and distribute them throughout the United States. Does anyone use data lights here? Yes? Anyone tell me why they're special? Anyone know? Tiny? The light's optics. That's an important one. That's probably the fundamental base of it all is the optics. So I'm just going to kind of show you a classic light because they've been around for a long time and if you've Think about a data light on set. That's the first thing that comes to your mind, even though we've now gone to the newest systems, which is an RGB ACL uh, engine run from uh, Prolict, which is a partner now, which is really amazing news for us. Uh, it's the first time that we've partnered with another manufacturer in order to give users incredible light beams. Uh, forgive me, I haven't uh, really prepared anything today, so, uh, you know, just go through this and show you a couple of the things that are new. One of the um, elements that I'm going to show you is something called Lightstream. Uh, it's the concept of magnifying our beams with optics so that you can reimagine them with reflectors. Reflectors is a big thing out there. Is anyone using reflectors out there? Yes? Can you tell me what you like using about them? You can put them anywhere. You don't need to run power to them. You can reimagine light. You can clean up light which is another really impressive thing with the reflector. It homogenizes light. So um, I'm just going to, just bear with me. So I had a client that, that emailed me, and he, it was a picture. Of all things, it was a still photography shoot, and he wanted to recreate this look. And he said, well, how many, how many lights am I going to need? And I want to use tungsten, and I want it to like, look really classic, like a 30s kind of look. And I looked at it, and I said, well, I don't know, maybe two? lights and it was more like a four or five or six light setup and I and he's like I don't understand what you're talking about like how, how would I do that and I said well I'll set it up in my studio I'll take a picture of it and I'll show it to you and I just kind of like picked it up and brought it over here just to give you a concept of what it is so you can sense what to do with this why would I want to use these lights with reflectors and how do you do something like that so the first thing I'll show you is how to create a couple of kickers on my subject here, mind you, this is a highly stylized look that I was sent. So keep that in mind. It's like two really big kickers with one light that was cut perfectly down the center. So there's actually shadows in between the kickers and the center of the face. So I'm going to show you how to do quick lighting that you can manipulate in a really defined way using these lights with optics. And that is why having an aspheric lens base gives you so much power and creativity quickly. So this is a beam uh, intensifier. And what we do is we're warping the light from a full flood, which is what these optics allow you to do. Instead of being an open face cob light, which most things are these days, you can actually get a full flood. This is a bicolor LED. This is the new DLED7 Neo light. It's a 90 watt light. And you can go from a full flood down to about a eight degree spot without any accessories and you really want a homogenous beam without any fringing, warping, shoulders in the beam, then you need that type of lensing in order to do that. So I have a certain amount of light here in a tight spot, but I need to get more light and I need it to be straight in order to start to really use the reflectors in a way that's going to be meaningful. Okay, So this lens takes the native flood and turns it back into, it warps it back into a spot, okay? So I'm only at about, I was at 15 de degrees on my ballast, okay? So I'm going now to 100 out, and then I'm going to warp it back into a spot, okay? So now I have, if I look at the numbers, probably about 300% more light packed into this really tight, tight beam. Essentially, afterwards, what you can do is you can start using it to uh, hit these reflectors. 
Now, these reflectors would give you varying exit angles. So one of them is a redirector, this one right here. So this is a number three, which is a 50 degree spread. Okay. This is a number one, which is a redirector. You can actually see it on the ground here in front of you. And I'm just basically taking a little bit of this light and I'm sending it over there. I still have this light here. Too much, so I'm gonna bring it down. Then I have this light over here. I'm taking a little piece of this tight, tight beam with a smaller reflector that's like a mirror and I'm hitting this reflector here. And I've got two kickers now. And they're actually, like I said, pretty stylized, very intense. It's, it's a little too bright. I, I would bring it down a little bit. But essentially, yes, it's possible. You create two sources with one source, but you do need that source to be really bright, really tight, and I didn't want to increase any power. I'm still only using 85, 90 watts, I think. It's, I'm thinking Ballast, I think, says 83 watts. We call it a 90 watt light. They do math very interestingly in Munich. Uh, and uh, so, hi, everybody. So you can see, though, that I've, I've really got two really beautiful kickers. They may be a little, the angle may be off a little bit because of the space that I have here. But this gives you a concept of creating new lights with a single light source and using reflectors effectively. I don't recommend using these reflectors with anything over a 15, 10 degree beam. If you can get your light down to five, seven, eight degrees, then you, you're really going to be able to use them effectively and meaningfully. Yeah? OK. Now, so I was going to do that with this light and have two kickers, but now I'm going to transition over to another concept with this light again. If I'm not using it, for beam intensifying one day and reflectors one day, then I may want to use it for something a little bit more graphical. Maybe I want to use it for tabletop work, which if you do commercial tabletop work, you work with products, and you like to work with shutter blades or you like to work with irises, there really is nothing out there that com quite compares to using these systems. But you can be the judge of that. Uh, I'm going to just kind of do what we would call an eye light. I believe someone here named Julio knows exactly what I'm talking about with this one, because I'm going to use an eye set to shape the light afterwards. And all I need to do basically is start to warp this into the right shape. All right, I'm using shutter blades. This is a dedicated shutter blade projector now, all right? And I'm going to bring it up. I just didn't want to blind you, Marianne. Okay. Not all right? All right. So I have, if I need to have perfect resolution, I can do perfect resolution. I can get absolutely crisp lines, okay? And I can do that to an extreme if I really wanted to. OK? So that's pretty tight. A lot of accuracy if you need to do that. And then beyond that, what I was going to do is show you how I could do that strip of light that I was going to do down the center of the face here, like this. But I'm going to stick to an eye light here because I just want to enhance, let's say, one feature of a product or a person's face or a picture on a wall, whatever it is that that may be, OK? So I'm going to get it in focus, which I kind of have. And then I'm going to use these, this thing called a DPI set. And what it does is it's, it's a little bit lighter than frost. And it, it just disrupts the pattern and gives you a poof of light within the space that you're lighting. So it disrupts the edges, but keeps the light contained where you want it in a tight space. So I'm going to turn this up to just give you the effect to, to enhance it so you can see what I'm talking about. So 
this gives you an idea of how quickly you can control and manipulate lights if you have effective lensing and what the accessories can do beyond that if you're starting with a really fundamentally an amazing base of uh, a system that allows you to take light, reimagine it creatively fast. You know, when you have someone breathing down your neck and you need a particular look, you know you can get it done if you know the tools, and this is the type of system that'll allow you to do that. Tell me more about the reflectors. Tell you more about the reflectors, strengths, differences. Uh, this is a standard, what we call a light stream reflector. That's the Ditto Light brand of reflectors. Uh, it, this is a rigid back reflector, which you would use probably in more professional studio environment because they're going to last longer. They come with a rail, a dovetail, dovetail rail on the back and some simple dovetail uh, grip accessories to get to 5 8 whether it's you know just a pin or a receiver. Um, there's different sizes and variations, 7 by 10 centimeters, 12 by 15 centimeters, 25 by 25, 50 by 50, and 1 meter by 1 meter. Um, the system, the systems of the idea of reflecting light, since there are a couple brands, it's just wonderful. It's, it's, a, it's a cool thing to do. There are slight variations between them, but not that much. In different spaces, people are going to combine reflectors from different places to do different things, right? And just to see what they can do. Now, on our end, we have one, a new one that's built really specifically as like a tabletop for like an owner operator because it's a little softer. It doesn't have the rigid backing on it. It's called Lightstream Light. Those are like an ounce each. They're 20 by 20 centimeters and they go on a shoe mount. So you can just grip them endlessly if you want to. That's a one, two, three reflector. So one is like a mirror. Two introduces a 12 degree flood, flood, and three introduces a 50 degree spread. That's why it's so important that the host beam is tight and bright because then you can normalize and repeat exactly what you want that light to look like afterwards. You know, so that's, that's There's it. a great video that, uh, that Sean has made that uh, is on our website about lighting miniatures with these systems. Yeah, I mean, these systems are built to, they're actually like lighting tools. They're, they're like precision lighting instruments. And if you're surgical about lighting, that, that's, this is the system that's been famous for 30 years doing that. And this is, this is a flagship new DL87 bicolor light. We make this light in seven different spectrums. So monocolor, but also if you're in specialty lighting, infrared ultraviolet, by infrared by ultraviolet, by color, single tungsten, single daylight. And then there's also varying degrees of light head sizes. So there's a Neo that's 40 watts, that's half its size. But whatever I'm showing you today and the accessories that are available are available for everything across the board. There's 50 different focusing lights we have, starting this big and going to this big, right? And everything in between is just more output larger scope, larger size beams, and all the accessories that you, I show you for one exist across the board for all of those light. And yeah. we shot a lot of uh, high speed high, photography. Have we shot a lot of high speed photography? So this system goes up to 50,000 frames per second. Okay, so any of, the, any of our LEDs, you should be able to get away with 50,000 frames per second. Other than that, our HMIs, there are, we have 1,000 hertz settings on those ballasts that can go, I mean, Data's talked to me about doing 10, 15,000 frames per second with those systems and them working fine. So the answer is yes. It just depends on how much light you need and how big you need to go in order to start capturing something on, you know, at all. With the beam intensifiers, it's really interesting because if you're looking at something small or you're doing something in tabletop and you're doing very slow motion, you can actually get away with using a smaller light like this, but using a magnifier to actually get 500% more light and honing the light to where you want. If you know where you want to put light, this is a really good system for you. If you don't know and you need big panels to just flood light into a space, these are not for you. They're, it's not, we don't do that. You know, we have panels, but it's not really the same. Mary Ann would like to add something? Yes, on the issue of uh, high-speed shooting, uh, vision, vision Research Phantom Camera has been shown by uh, Vision Research for many years with the Dolight because of the high-speed capability. So, yeah. 
It was quite interesting when a few years ago Dedo saw the Prolic Light engine on the Orion. He was really astonished by the quality of the color engine. Uh, Dr. Uh, Ankin Lu, I'm sure he's going to be happy with my pronunciation, uh, is a color scientist. He's one of the people who worked on the new CIE standards. And he's also worked a lot on perceptual uh, color, which means how the human brain actually process the color. So he comes from both of a engineering background, but also is very savvy about the human behavior and response to light. Uh, so the color engine is absolutely fantastic on the Orion light, if you've seen the two model 300 and 675. Um, and when they do so that, he thought, wow, imagine what I could do with good optics on there. Uh, because of course the Orion are open face cob, so they start with a very wide beam. We are looking at basically 50 degree uh, beam flood for the 300 Orion and 80 degree for the 675. So now Dedo, who used to work with tungsten filament or an arc, very tiny, with the capability of having optics moving in and out inside the housing, has now a source that is between 1.5 and 2 inch square with six color versus just tungsten or just daylight, no possibility to move the cob because it's bolted to the front of the housing. And they thought, ha ha, pandemic is here, I'm gonna have so much fun. So three years later, when COVID was over for everybody, they all came out of the woods and say, I got it. And we now have four fantastic pieces of optics to pair on the prolic light. Uh, so as you understand, starting from a small, source to a cob, you cannot just take one accessory and put it anywhere. So those accessories are specifically designed mechanically and optically to not only fit physically on, on the Bowen's mount of the prolix system, but also to give good optical result. Again, six colors, so if it's not done right, you're going to have colors all over the place. Uh, they are basically, that's when I need to look at my notes. There's basically the first accessory I'm gonna start with is the wide angle attachment. It's very interesting for people who have the Orion 300 because at the widest uh, uh, native beam, we are at uh, 50 degree, the wide angle optical attachment by Dedo brings it to 80 degree. So it gives you a super smooth, homogeneous, very, very wide beam. Um, the, it's very homogeneous, and then another thing the, this wide angle attachment has are barn doors, and the way the optics is work, you can cut with those barn doors with really a minimum amount of color fringing where you cut, which with a six LED system, you know it's not that easy to achieve. Uh, the second accessory that they do design for the prolic light is a parallel beam attachment. These are specifically useful when you want to work with mirrors. As Sean was mentioning, you have to start with a very tight beam so you can do what you want. If the beam is like five times the size of your reflectors, it's totally useless work. So you start with very tight beam and the parallel beam attachment that Dedo designed for Prolic ends up giving you a 14 degree beam on the 300 uh, Orion and a 17 degree beam on the 675. So if you are interested in doing uh, reflector work with the Orion, definitely look at this. It's not a very big optics, which is kind of like strange on Dedo's part. I would think maybe it's gonna add weight, you know, or something. No, no, we, we managed to keep it fairly small and tight on the, li on the light. The, s the third accessory that Dedo has designed, which a lot of people know in the small medium size, which is called the DP1, DP2, everybody has that in their classic set. There's a bigger size projector that Dedo has been manufacturing for a long time, which is called the DP400, and it goes on what we call the A size light, typically the 500575 HMI, the DLED10, the DLED9, that medium size light. So Dedo took his DP400 projector and made an adaptation for the Orion. So again, when you want to adapt on the Orion, you have two things that you have to consider. First, the mechanical interface, because they have a Bowen's mount, and then also the optical uh, distance to the cob and quality in order to make something that is really high quality. On the mount, um, Prolic did a fantastic job, and you can see it here at, at our display. 
they modified completely the Bowen's mount to give it a bayonet style mount, very much like we in the old days did on camera, and I'm sure a few people still do on cameras. So the lens cannot, is really well secured and it's not drooping or wobbling or anything. Uh, and so on the 675, the mount is really spectacular, and that allows us to put really heavy accessory on the front without having a drooping effect. The DP400 basically can accommodate three different lenses right now, uh, starting in the widest by a 100 millimeter, then 150, then 185. And in these projectors, you can put iris, gobos, shutter assemblies, um, any, any of the accessories you have on the regular dedo projector. The same accessories exist for the prolic version of the dedo projector. Um, finally, the last, last and fourth uh, accessory that Dedo designed for the ProLeak, it's a zoom. So it's interesting because uh, with the uh, fixed Fresnel uh, that ProLeak has, uh, they go, uh, the widest they are is 15 degrees, basically. So with the Dedo zoom, you can cut in half that distance. So you are not starting at around 8 degrees, and it's an variable zoom, so you can go from the 8 degree to 33 degree on the Orion 300, and I'm sorry, 33 degree on the 300 and 36 degree on the 675. It's a very large piece of glass, but you know, if you want good quality optics, you're not gonna put a tiny piece of glass in front. So we invite you to please come, and uh, Mitch is here from Polished, and we have all the accessories here, or almost pretty much all of them here for you to have a look at. And uh, thank you for having us today. And you have a studio here in yes. uh, Burbank, very yeah. close. Yeah, we have a studio in Burbank. I like calling it, it's a, it's a mini lighting stage with offices on the side. We can go totally dark. We try to have all the toys. The best is to call and make an appointment and we can spend four or five hours. Bring your light meter, bring your color meter, bring your other lights if you want to see how things compares. And we just have fun. Thank you, thank you, Sean and Marianne. You can educate yourself at datolightcalifornia.com. That's a resource that we've been building for quite some time to try to educate people on how to actually order and get parts for things that were really complex for some reason at some point, made very complex, so you can do that there. I'll just thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.